Now, let me introduce the first speaker of this Holy Saturday Tr Triduum retreat, accompanying Mary, the Sorrowful Mother, in silence, Father John Hansen. Father John is the present superior of SMP, and he is a known figure in several apostolates, such as the Alliance of the Two Hearts and the Philippine Liturgical Society. He will take, sorry, he will talk on Mary, the woman of peace amidst persecution. Here is Father John. My dear brothers and sisters in our Jesus, first of all, I just want one little correction. I am not the uh, uh, general superior for the Society of Our Mother of Peace, uh, both of us. I am for the Sons of Our Mother of Peace, and of course, uh, the sisters have their own uh, Superior General. But it's a delight to be with you this morning. I'm glad that you could come and actually be present on our property uh, rather than someplace else today. Uh, so it gives you an opportunity, those of you who have not been out here before, it gives you an opportunity to see our place. Uh, we do have a retreat program, <laughs> a solitary retreat program available uh, for people as well. You know, one of the things that uh, St. Paul tells us is that all things work together unto good uh, for those who love God. Now, we might wonder, well, you know, uh, you're giving some kind of sign to me. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> okay, uh, all things work together unto good for those who will love God. Now we can wonder, well, did St. Paul just have a especially good day, a good night's rest, and uh, was feeling very good in the morning and felt like being a little poetic by saying all things work together unto good for those who love God. Uh, was it, uh, you know, at a time when he was lifted up to the third heaven and after he came down, that was what he said? Well, if that were the case, we also know that he also wrote in his letter to the Romans, chapter 7, about the fact that he, those things I want to do, I fail to do, and those things I don't want to do, I do. <laughs> so basically what I want to do center first of all is talk about struggle. Struggle is very much part and parcel of our lives. Uh, whether we're talking about something on a daily level, or sometimes hourly level, it can even happen at any moment uh, in our lives that we experience struggle. And struggle can be on all kinds of levels. Uh, we can struggle physically, especially as we start getting older. There's struggles that go on with that. Uh, there's the struggle of temptation of sins, the, the, the struggle of frustrations, anxieties, fears, all the different things that can come into our lives, and especially through the unexpected that comes with every day. Uh, different things that we had planned, that we got our agenda set up for the day, and something else comes in. Uh, and we can struggle with that. So uh, I think we, we want, and even struggle with, with such things as trivia, little trifles. We spend a lot of time uh, dealing with the trifles that come in our lives. We can spend uh, so much time, energy, and thinking about things that have no consequence after this. And that's why I think we need it so important to appreciate that when we think about life here on earth, we, we tend to be very focused on our backyard and all the immediate things that are happening around us, and we give all our attention to these, but uh, is that the most important thing? When we think about our life here on earth, what is life on here on earth in comparison to eternity? But a blink of, of, the, of the eyelid, and even not that much. It's so short a time that we have. And yet at the same time, so very important is this very short time. So it makes us to be able to appreciate that I need to be getting in touch with, am I in touch with reality? Am I taken up with just all the superficial things? Now, when I say those things, there, some of those are important needs. And they are duties and part and parcel of our state in life that we need to attend to. But do I need to put all my heart into these things, my attention and everything else into them, and bypass what I'm really here for in the first place? All of you who have any encounter with uh, the old catechism know what is the goal of life? To be with to love God. God. 
Okay, union with God. Why did God create us? Now, I didn't say anything about bank accounts and yeah, <laughs> no. a nice professional job and uh, living those, a long life. Those things just come in place. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it's telling us something about, I mean, it was an easy answer to give sister when you were in class, and you better know your answer, <laughs> you know. But it's beyond that. These are simple truths and yet profound truths. They tell us something about why we are here. It all revolves around a God who called us into existence from the very moment, from all eternity, you and I have been in the mind of God. We've been in the womb of God's mind from all eternity. Out of millions of possibilities, he chose you and I to be and chose us for a certain time and a place on this earth. But that point of, that, of this life is, in fact, to find ourselves more and more deeply rooted in what? What is he looking for? If God is our origin, and God is our destiny, isn't he? To be with him, we said, to be with him forever and happy in heaven, then what is this life here on earth all about? And that's what we want to appreciate. It's a call to... If we came from God and God is desirous that we go to God, then this little life here on earth is all about God, our relationship with God. We were made for God. We were made for infinite, intimate, everlasting love. That's what we were made for. That's why nothing on this earth, anything I can store up, anything I can touch, is not it. I'm not going to find my happiness in it. It's always, it's always passing away, and I'm always looking for some other new thing, some other thing that will indeed gratify me, will supposedly satisfy me. But nothing will. We have a God hole in our hearts, and we can try to stuff, stuff all kinds of things in that hole, but nothing ever satisfied. And just like St. Augustine said, my heart is restless, and until it rests in you. Until God finds his home in my life, I truly find real, true peace and rest. So that's the thing is, that I think the invitation is that we want to be able to appreciate that. But especially in the context of our struggles in life, to be able to appreciate that God is there. All things, we said. Not any other thing. <laughs> All things work together unto good for those who love God. Now, what is it that works together unto good uh, for us? And then I think we think we want to appreciate the fact that at this time, we are in the middle of the holiest days of the church year. They are the holiest days. We know that all these things that we celebrate at this time is true every day of the whole year. But Holy Mother Church has seen fit to highlight the passion, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord, setting it up in a special way for us so that we could appreciate their place in our lives, being able to appreciate it in our everyday life, so that these truths become the very foundation on which I stand. Think about it. The Holy Sacrament, when Jesus is on the cross, Two great gifts were given us. First of all, the Mass. The Mass that was begun in the upper uh, in the cynical at, at the Last Supper ended with Jesus' death on the cross. That was the first Mass. The Mass is the greatest gift that we can possibly be given by the very fact that every day we can be empowered by the very sacrifice of Jesus. And he gives us nothing less than himself, body and blood, soul and divinity, he gives us his very heart to be able to share every day all our struggles, ups and downs, everything that happens our way is all given to us. What was the other gift that he gave us? His mother. His mother. <laughs> his mother. Now, if we say that a person, when they're dying, what we want to, if they, if they ever have been put under morphine, you know, you'll probably maybe get some of their last words. <laughs> but 
in the days gone by when people died, you were attentive to their last words. You know, if you read some of the lives of the saints, some of the beautiful things that were said, like St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, I'm going to light, to life, to love. That was her last words before going into heaven. So the thing is, is that if, if someone dying, we want to hear what their last words are, Jesus' seven last words at Calvary are as exceptional. And that among those words, he gave us his mother. Ah, oh, that's a special gift. I mean, Jesus didn't have to give, it to, give her to us. He could have kept her as our own, you know, her, her, his own mother. That would have been it, you know, fairly, fairly good. But no, he wanted to give her to us. And that's a very special gift that's been given to us in that relationship that call uh, to be taken up as children of our Blessed Mother. So our focus at this time is Mary at the foot of the cross. How was she able, in the midst of all the mockery, the insults, the nailing of Jesus on the cross, all that was taking place, how is it that she stood? Was she taken up with what, everything what, that was going on about her? No. As one author puts it, unless there is within us, which is above us, we soon yield to what is about us. So we want to be able to appreciate that what's within us is our orientation, our relationship with God. Our Lady wasn't taken up with all the stuff that was going on. She was taken up with the sacrifice of Jesus. She was one heart with God's will for us. God so loved the world that he gave us the only, the only son. God's son. That so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So that's the thing. God, God is working for that great good uh, in our lives. Be able to appreciate that. So when we, we want the invitation at this time, as we said, you know, um, Mary, the woman of peace amidst, amidst persecution. Well, if you wait until the battle is on, you're not going to be ready. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Uh, soldiers are not just taken from civilian life and put on the front line. It doesn't work that way. And it doesn't work that way in the spiritual life either. We can't wait until the persecutions come and then expect to be ready. We have to join Our Lady's boot, boot camp. She has to train us. And that's exactly what she does throughout her whole life. Through her fiat, through her surrender to God's holy will in her life, then indeed, in fact, she was able to come to that beautiful point of being able to stand in the midst of that terrible sacrifice, all seeing her son, and knowing that this is the son, son of God, that we have put him on the cross, he's dying for our sins, for the forgiveness of sins, and to lift us up, to lift us up, to be what? To become the people who God has called us to be in Christ, saints, are you? Are we saints in the rough? Yes, in the making. <laughs> in the making. Yes, every day. Every day. day. Oh no, no. Just it's just on Sundays. <laughs> just when I'm at prayer, when I get with the alliance of the two hearts. <laughs> Not at all. It's. What did Jesus say at the very beginning of his ministry? He said that the time of fulfillment is no. tomorrow. Is no. now. The kingdom of God is no. coming. <laughs> it is at hand. At hand. So it's not a matter of waiting around. You see, God is present in our everyday lives and our blessed mother is there to help us. To help us to be able to say our fiat, our yes to God. So when we find ourselves in the context of that struggle, you know, the old self is being fearful right now, the situation, situation blah, 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 you know, what am I going to do? You see? Then we say, uh uh, no, I'm not going there. Lord, help me. Blessed Mother, be with me so that I can let go of my fears and place myself in the hand of God. When I was called to Nigeria at the very beginning in 2002, <laughs> I was sent there. We, and now you remember, I, I live in these little woods, 
for 25 years in a little hermitage. I was sent to Nigeria after we had picked out 26 men. And, I was going, and because we couldn't put them into the seminary, it was in the middle of the school year, we had to start a house of formation. And guess who was sent? So here I was, all of a sudden, going from a tiny little hermitage to a three-story building in Nigeria, in a country I didn't know, the culture I didn't know, and I didn't know the 26 young men that I was living with. <laughs> ah, I, I tell you, there were days for about the first three months, I'd go up to, I had a room up on the third floor, and I'd look out the window, and something looked like Mary the Font Solitude. <laughs> <laughs> and I long for the day when I'd be back in that little hermitage. And I said, Lord, how long am I <laughs> how long am I gonna be here? The only thing that helped me was a prayer that I simply could hold on to was Lord, I have the grace for this moment. I have the grace for this moment. I have the grace for this moment. Where it was all going to go to, how it was going to end, what was going to happen, I had no idea, except that I had the grace for this moment. And in this moment, who's there? Jesus. That's right. <laughs> God and Mary are right present there in this moment. So our mission in life is now. 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 And you know as well as I, all those nows come sometimes clothed with boredom, sometimes clothed with frustration, Sometimes cold because I'm tired. Sometimes I'm not feeling well. Sometimes people don't like me. <laughs> now I have been a success today. I have been a failure today. All those nows come in different clothes. Different clothes. But what does Mary and Jesus teach us? That now is our mission. Today is the day that God is present in this moment. And I can beg of him, Lord, I have only the grace for this moment. Help me to cooperate with it. That means surrendering my old self in order to become the new self in Christ. And our Blessed Mother is certainly wanting to help us to do that. How do we begin that? I think we need to be able to appreciate what was she standing on? Divine providence. Divine providence. She believed that God was caring for her every moment. And that's exactly what we want to appreciate. We exist simply by God's holy will. If it weren't for His will, then exactly, we, we, wouldn't, we would we just go puff, you know? But God is sustaining us every moment of our life. He sustains us, holds us, but He wants something more for us, and that is our relationship with Him. Relationship with Him, which our Blessed Mother is all out to help us to appreciate. But what she stood on was divine providence, that God was working out His plan for her life and His plan for ours. And that's what we want to be able to appreciate. How are we going to get, how can I move from this frustration uh, situation or from this difficult situation or this spiritual situation and be able, the unexpected situation, how can I deal with it when it comes to me? I have to be able to say that God is present in my life. I need to be able to work on it. Now there are a lot of things that we could work on, but take one area in your life and in mine. Take one little aspect of your area in our lives and be able to think about how I can move from my fear or situation to be able to rely on divine providence that God is caring for me. Even though it looks like a dead end road. I'll tell you what, those things in Nigeria, that was quite exceptional for me. You know, but somehow, don't we all seem to deal very well with big crosses sometimes? It's those tiny little slivers of the cross that are more difficult. <laughs> and I don't have to look in back at your backyard at all. <laughs> I got all these slivers myself. So I know how, how hard it is sometimes to face even those little slivers that God provides, God provides for our growth. The, the Lord is calling us to appreciate that in our call to trust firmly. That's what Our Lady did. She stood at the foot of the cross. She was trusting. She stood firmly in God's love for her and for our salvation, the love that Jesus was 
ex showing and expressing in his death on the cross, she stood firm. And so are we called to stand firm in the context of the different situations that come up in our lives. And But we need to have a program. Father Plastic told us one time in a retreat that if you really want to grow in virtue, you would say we're going to grow in patience. You know we are very, I don't know about you, but can be very impatient. <laughs> we want to grow in patience. Oh, we say, we go to the Lord, oh Lord, grant me the grace to be patient. Sounds wonderful. And then we stop out, step out of our prayer, go into, out of the church. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't you know how to drive a car? <laughs> you know? Immediately we begin right back to it. Oh, well, no. how are we going to catch ourselves? How are we going to catch ourselves? I think the only thing is that what Father said to us is that you take one aspect of where you experience impatience. When Brother Pastor Nusser's, okay. Whenever I see Brother Passenuches, my hair rises, my, you know, okay. So I want to take this day, my agenda, is to be patient anytime I see Brother Passenuches. And do that for 10 days straight. 10 days straight, being patient with him. Then you take the next, if, you're, if you succeeded for 10 days, then you work with, Sister Dimsna for the next week. <laughs> but at the same time, working with Brother Pathodusius. <laughs> That's the only way we're going to get become virtuous. We need to get specific with our dealings with, in life. Don't let just generalities, oh, I'm going to be patient. Well, forget it. You're not going to do it. Neither will I. It has to be worked on a singular, specific base that we will work and grow in real virtue in our lives. So the Lord is working for us. The Lord and Our Lady is working uh, in our context of everyday lives. We want to be able to appreciate that, you know. And uh, so in this very special time, but again, my brothers and sisters, not only that program, but what's absolutely essential to take the truths of our faith I'm going to really believe in God's presence in my life in the present moment. I really believe that my Heavenly Father has me in His hands. Remember that song? We've been, he has carved our, his, our names where? In the palm, in the palm of, our, of His hands. Will He forget us? No. Will He let go of us? No. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> If we go by our feelings, we are going to be do doomed to failure for sure. We cannot go along by our feelings. God gives us a grace to be, to choose Him above every other thing and not allow. See, when St. Paul says, all things work together unto good, we're thinking of all these nice good feelings and good things that come our way. No, goodness comes to us and it can come wrapped in any package. Any package, because God knows, even if it's a difficulty, that he's got it in place for a greater good coming down. I remember one time I had a group of uh, African-American uh, women that I used to meet with. They were lay associates of our community. And I w we always had a, the first part of our, of our meeting was to have a spiritual discussion. So as I'm driving to St. Louis, I, I was thinking about, now what spiritual topic can I uh, start these people off on, and we start a nice conversation. So I thought, I know, and they all had to put in a half hour of daily, a quiet prayer every day as part of being our lay associate program. So I thought, oh, I know. What do you do when you go to your prayer and God seems to have checked out of town, uh, you feel dry as a bone, and you couldn't stir up a stick of love in you at all. What are you going to do? Well, I was expecting to hear, well, I have one of those days, I go sweep the clean, clean the house, or I do, you know, I got some other thing to do. Missouri Cook, a grandmother, a mother, she, she's the first one, she, older woman, she says, when I'm having one of those days, I spend my full half hour, because I know that two days down the road, I'm going to have the strength to meet something because I stayed with him today. I didn't know what we were going to do for the next 40 minutes since I, <laughs> for our discussion. I was blown away. <laughs> I've never forgotten that response. 
So when nothing was going physically, emotionally, that's, this is not the end of the road, how this is feeling. The end of the road is God's grace in the present moment. He's giving me the grace for now. To get my cross, guess what? Our Lady is going to take us. Where is she going to take us? Where? To her Jesus. Good. And part of taking him to her son is to be able to, what we're all called to do is, what is Jesus doing in every one of our lives? To be able to live out the mysteries of Christ in our lives. And part of the mysteries of faith in our life is to follow Jesus. Jesus said, hey, guys, uh, you, you fishermen, I tell you what, um, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Sound inviting? Well, if you're a fisherman, <laughs> maybe, maybe you're a little bit tired of the smell of fish. <laughs> this sounds like a, like a new, like something more exciting to do. So, but did they know where they were going to go? They were just going to, you know, where was the Lord leading them? Where does the Lord lead us? Ultimately, we're going to all experience, as we do daily on a smaller level, but we experience that we're going to come to Mount Calvary. And when we get to the when we get to the base of Mount Calvary, supposedly carrying our cross, and stop and say, Oh look, Jesus did it all. Sound familiar? Jesus did it all. And I don't have to do that sounds very Protestant. <laughs> Jesus did it all. You see? I, I just get to the base of the hill and I can stop. <laughs> no. The invitation is to go up to Calvary. Because his mystery of his passion, death, and resurrection has to take place in my life only if I go with him part of the way. All the way. All the way. All the way. How am I going to find the strength to go all the way with Jesus? Are we taking out the time to pray every day in our lives the truths of our faith? Taking time to indeed deepen our relationship with the one who is crazy about us. God and our Blessed Mother is seeking to help us to appreciate the relationship we're called to. But if I don't take out time for prayer, I will not be able to, to be able to enter into uh, that great uh, gift of being able to become one with Christ in order to be one with him in his new life, resurrected life. Isn't that what baptism was all about? Deacon Jess, what do we do when we baptize people? What's happening when you baptize somebody? Good, so we, we get plunged into the waters. The old man, the old lady, dies. What came out of the waters was? New a new creation. A new creation. So every day we're called to live out our baptism, to die to the old in order to live the new. So I'm dying to my fears, my attachments, my desires of my own sort, in order to be able to come up and to be one mind. St. Paul talks about put on this mind, the mind of Christ, his heart, his ways. How will I do that? Mary of Bethany does a beautiful gift. When Jesus comes to Martha's house, where is Mary of Bethany? At Jesus' feet. And at Jesus' feet. What is she doing at his feet? Lisa, this, is, this is very uncomfortable. <laughs> no. She's taking in his spirit, his mind, his heart, his whole truth. She's taking a Jesus. So she becomes his other self. Other self. Oh, boy, that, that's a beautiful gift. He became, she became more and more his disciple to be his other self in the world. What does the world need to know? That Jesus is ancient history. That Jesus is alive and well. He's alive and well. How will they know it? If they don't 
How will they know it? Through us. Through us. They, they want to see Jesus in you and I. Our behavior, our thoughts, our attitude, how we speak to people, how we deal with people, how we deal with the simplest work that we have, all can speak Jesus because all of it is what we want to do for Jesus, for souls. And you know that means stretching ourselves. Stretching beyond my wishes, beyond my desires, in order to be Jesus. That's how the world will know that Jesus is indeed alive and well in your life and in mine. And the world, you know as, I, as well as I, our real world really needs to see that. Really needs to see that in this time of darkness. You know, we have a lay associate, Marie Boyce, and she says, this is a great time to be a Catholic. <laughs> and it is. We should be always happy to appreciate it's a great time to be a Catholic because the kingdom of God is <laughs> at hand. Do we see it all the time? Do we hear it on the news? Do we hear about, no? Uh, look in the papers, do you see that happening? No? Only what will depress us, only what will be discouraging us, only that what puts fear in us, and all the time the kingdom of God is? Amen. 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 You think God is sleeping? No. no, he's working. He's working. And he's working and spreading out the kingdom, even though, like a small mustard seed, what's going to happen? The small mustard seed put in the ground becomes a big bush where the birds of the sky can rest in its branches. So, I want to appreciate that God, God is at work in, in our lives. And so we want to appreciate our stance is with Our Lady, appreciating God's loving providence in our lives so that we can express Jesus in all that we do, all that we can come to be, you know. And so, uh, taking out the time for prayer is going to be comforting, not necessarily. It can be convicting. It can be convicting. It can be something that calls me to conversion, to change. And that's exactly what I want to do. Jesus and Blessed Mother is out there to help us to change, to become more like, like Jesus. Is there an end? Can I say at a certain point, hey, you know, I got it together. I'm finished. I'm done. God doesn't have to do anything more with me. I'm really done. <laughs> if we're talking about a relationship with God who is infinite, there's no end to that relationship, and there's no end to what He wants to do in our lives. No end. And our Blessed Mother is set up to be able to help us all along the way. So we want to be able to appreciate that. Now, um, I'm going to, yeah, I'd like to end with a little song that goes like this, if I can remember all the words to it. <laughs> on my best day, I'm your child. On my worst day, I'm your child. Any day is a good day, Lord. Because of you, O oh Lord, you're the reason why every day I am blessed, O oh Lord. Every day we're blessed because whether we are having our best day or we're having our worst day, God is <laughs> present in the present moment and we are his child no matter what. So we hold on to those truths, but prayer will be able to help us to do that. <coughs> I don't know. And besides that, really, it gives us the, guys, the opportunity to change our hearts and our lives. I don't know if there's any uh, questions or <coughs> comments or anything like that that people would like to make at this time. I don't know about you. It's kind of warm in here, isn't it? Yes, sister. What Father was saying about patience. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an example. The sister was in the chapel making an hour of adoration. And there was a whippoorwill. Whippoorwill, whippoorwill, whippoorwill. It just keeps on and on and on. And she came out of that chapel, she took off her shoe and threw it at the bird. <laughs> <laughs> and that shoe got stuck in the tree. They never got it there. <laughs> Yeah. Any other? 
Yes, you could. Sometimes the struggle and the challenge is to realize that when God is working on us, it is us who does the work. Uh -huh. It is us who should be the receiver of the grace, but at the same time, our responsibility responds to that. Right on. Responds to that yeah. grace. Yeah. It's up to us to show to the people, to show to our neighbor, right on. through our character, through our behavior, uh -huh. through our values. Yeah. Very because much sometimes so. there is a misunderstanding that it is God who does it. Uh -huh. Yes, it is true, halfway, because <laughs> it is God's grace uh -huh. to help us do it. Yeah, right. So it is up to us, really, to form the character, to form our habits day by day. Yeah. It is a struggle. Yeah, it, it's a, it, uh, to, to cooperate with God's graces is absolutely essential. Uh, you know, it's not enough just to, I mean, you couldn't just receive and not receive and not give something, not show a response. Even like prayer, a lot of times, you know, in the old catechism, prayer, we under, understood it as lifting up our minds and hearts to God. But we're not the initiator. <laughs> God himself is pressing to give himself to us. So in response to his desire to give himself to us, we lift up our minds and hearts to him by way of grace. But it's it's there's a there's a there has to be a response in our our part, and that's where even the whole thing of practice of virtue is not only being graced for it, but we have to practice the virtue, be allow Jesus to be one with us. Yeah. I any? wonder if there's any questions like, have you ever? What's your experience with persecution? What do you do when yeah. you feel? Says Mother Mary knew what the persecution of us. What do you do when you feel persecuted, or do you feel persecuted ever? Yeah. Yeah, Deacon. I would first recognize that it is a persecution uh -huh. and recognize my stand on it. That is a cross that I have to bear. Uh -huh. That Jesus' teaching is to bear the cross like he did, mm -hmm. forgive the enemy, mm -hmm. pray for them. Mm -hmm. If we forget who we are, if we forget the role of God in this situation, mm -hmm. and believe that, oh God will save me, oh God will do everything for me. Mm -hmm. No, it is, not, it is always the collaboration mm -hmm. of the grace of God in us. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to really form the kind of man and woman we are, mm -hmm. children of God, but the, the hands, the feet, the eyes, the ears of God on earth. That's so right. Everything is to be done by us. Yeah. So the recognition first that that is a cross that mm -hmm. God tells us to bear like mm -hmm. he did mm -hmm. on Calvary. Yeah. And, and then, of course, we know when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, right. for they know not what they do. So even given the excuse for them, you know, for what their bad, bad behavior was. Uh, I mean, it's not hard, it's not easy. It's one of those areas, and Jesus stressed it in the Gospels time and time again about forgiveness. You know, when it comes to our, our enemies, we are to bless them, not curse them, pray for them, uh, reach out, do something for them, uh, you know, do the good, uh, to, as it were, to hold, put on coals of fire on top of their heads by our goodness to them. Helps them to appreciate that we had, uh, <clears throat> One time we had a couple of our brothers were doing apostolic work in our other monastery near Springfield. And as they were going door to door, they had invitations that they gave out to people as they came to the door. They came to this one door and they gave the invitation to the man, but he was very rude to them and just closed the door on them. Okay, so, uh, but as he closed the door on them, he began to wonder, <laughs> he said to himself, now, why was I so rude to them when they were so kind and uh, gentle with me, you know? And so what he did is he looked in that invitation. And it just so happened that that invitation had the telephone number for our community, our monastery community there in near Springfield, Queen of Heaven, Solitude. And so he called up that number and he said, listen, I, I want to apologize uh, to those two men who came 
I was very rude to them, and they were very kind to me, so I want to apologize for my behavior. Well, <laughs> what? you never know what happens when the door closes. <laughs> you know, and they walk away from that experience because they've met Christ in you. You know, even if they act badly in front of you, who knows if you and I are virtuous in that context and they walk away, they can begin, the Lord can begin to work on their minds and hearts in that situation. You may not see it right away, but it is what God does by his grace in their life because of what you have, how you responded, how you dealt with that. Okay, anything else? Okay, very good. Now, well, great, uh, great to be with you this morning. I'm so happy that you could be here at our solitude. Uh, and God bless you all <laughs> as you continue on this beautiful day. Thank you very much. Thank you.